And my name is Dr Liz Alvey and I am a university teacher at uh, the University of Sheffield in the UK. So I started my undergraduate studies at the University of Nottingham um, doing biochemistry and genetics and I really enjoyed it but I didn't think about plants at all and this is partly because at Nottingham you do genetics in a medical school physically in the medical school, in the hospital, and plants is physically far, far away at Sutton Boddington. Um, but when I came to the end of my second year, I really wanted to do a summer placement. And so, um, so I was looking for people to supervise me in my summer placement. And um, one of the people that I contacted was Professor Ian Graham at the University of York. And he said, hey, I can find you some money. All you have to do is go down to Cambridge and have a little chat. And so that was my first introduction to Gatsby. So I got to Cambridge and I had my little chat and Gatsby funded uh, my uh, undergraduate studentship and then went on to fund my uh, PhD. So I did a PhD uh, with um, Professor Nick Harbord at the John Innes Centre, which is a really cool plant institute in Norwich. And um, I studied hormone regulation of plant growth. So how plants decide uh, whether to grow, whether to hang back a bit, uh, depending on their environment. And so the signals come in from the environment and the plant processes these and decides, is now a good time to grow? Or maybe uh, I should you know, take it easy for a bit in case something bad comes up. So I did my PhD with Nick Harbord and then I moved to um, Cambridge and uh, changed tack a little bit to look at um, how plants decide whether to um, reproduce on their own or with a friend. So plants can do both, and um, particularly in early land plants, they um, can reproduce on their own, or they can reproduce sexually, where they produce um, pollen and ovules and flowers. And so I was looking at how um, plants have changed their minds over time about the strategies for reproduction. So I did that at the University of Cambridge. So that's my research background in plants. I guess we're thinking a little bit about, um, you know, sort of early land plants. So by early land plants, we, be, we mean mosses and ferns, and they have uh, different strategies for, for reproduction. And they also have different life cycles. So um, when you look at a plant, nearly all plants that you can think of, they're often flowering plants. And it means that most of the plant, the bit that you can see, is what's called the sporophyte. So it means that it's diploid. So it has two copies of every gene. And in a, a plant that reproduces with somebody else, that means they have one copy from their maternal parent and one copy from their paternal parent. Um, and so the, the part, of, part of the life cycle where they are um, haploid is very, very small. So in a plant that we looked at, you'd never see it. It's buried deep in the flower. Whereas the opposite is true of mosses. So the bit of the moss that you can see is the haploid stage, so the gametophytic phase, and they only spend a very tiny amount of their life cycle as a diploid, and again, that happens deep in the spores, so not the bit that you could see if you saw, saw, a, uh, saw, a, um, saw a, uh, a moss just growing on a wall. So we were looking at you know, the, the genes that would be important, the switching between these two things, so this gametophytic development and this sporophytic development. So over, um, over a lifetime, uh, well, over evolution, you can study things over really big time periods. And so one of the ways you can sort of travel back in time um, is to look at these earlier land plants. So although they are around today, um, they, um, they're sort of ancient plants. So you can, it's kind of a way of sneakily going back in time without having to dig into the fossil record. So the reason that I moved away from, um, it's a common story actually, the reason I recently moved away from research into teaching is because I was following my partner. So uh, there's often a challenge um, with uh, managing two careers and it can be quite challenging. So, um, so I moved to Sheffield and was looking for a job there. And um, so I got a small temporary job as a teaching only contract and I loved it. So um, universities now have uh, two different pathways that you can go through the academic career. So for from lecturer to senior lecturer to professor. And one of the pathways is teaching only. So I'm a teaching only um, academic, so a senior lecturer at the University of Sheffield. So that means my job involves teaching undergraduates um, and uh, master's students. And so I will teach and I'll organize teaching. Um, and it's a really very lovely job. So I really enjoy teaching 
things. Um, so I teach plant science um, in the minority of the time. So the most of the time I'm teaching the fundamentals of biochemistry and genetics, um, but I also try and sneak in as many plant examples as I can um, so that the students hear about how amazing plants are. So the best thing about my job by far is the students. So it's really, it's really um, excellent to be able to speak to students about their ideas. Um, and when the questions that the that students can ask can be really insightful and you think, well, why do we do it that way? And it prevents you from getting entrenched into a single way of thinking about this is the way it's always been done. And obviously students have, um, you know, have a, have no way of knowing what, how, how it's always been done. So they come up with creative and, and new solutions. Um, and so I think the best thing is the students and then how variable my job is. So um, you have quite a lot of freedom about what you do with your time. So one of my new projects for this year is to set up a, a summer school with the Sutton Trust, um, which is a charity that supports social mobility in the UK. And so um, my job is incredibly variable. And so I, that's the second best thing about my job, that uh, I have a lot of freedom to chase after projects that I'm excited about and feel passionate about. So um, I would recommend uh, a teaching uh, career to, 